and welcome to another video by Adrian David from Pure Electric. This is the third video in my transposition series. And in this video, we're going to quickly practice the formula for resistivity before we move on to the formula for um, Pythagoras. The reason that I'm going to start with this is because hopefully by now, you guys should be looking at this, seeing what I've put in the box. So we're looking for L and you should already be chipping away at that formula without me having to even tell you. OK, that's where you should be by this point. For those of you that don't know what you're doing at this point, I suggest you go and watch videos one and two because they're slightly easier. And then come back to this video later. But those of you that do, you should know by now that I can't do anything with this because it's a fraction and I need to remove the A and get it upstairs. So at the moment, I've got PL divided by A, I times the A out. Whatever I do that side, I have to do to this side. OK, and you should also know as well, because they're times each other, it doesn't matter which way around they go. So, for instance, if PL was 10 and A was 5, well, 10 times 5 is 50. So if I had the, the 5 before the 10, that would be 5 times 10. Well, that still equals 50. So it doesn't matter which way around you get it with times. When we move on to Pythagoras theorem, you'll see that it does matter which way we get it around, and I'll explain why when we do that. OK, you should also know at this point that that is balanced. OK, however, I need to clean it up. So times A divided by A, nothing happens. So now we're here. So 2, I've got A times R equals PL. OK, I don't need to do anything else because times A divided by A cancels that out. You should also know by this video that when you've got two next to each other like this, it's assumed that they're times each other. So P times L. I've got resistivity times length. I've now got everything on the top line. So now I can select out what I'm looking for. I can look back up here, remind myself what we're looking for. We're looking for L. L is attached to P. At the moment, it's times. Opposite of times is divide. So I can divide the P away from the L. Whatever I do that side, I do this side. And again, the formula is balanced, but I need to clean it up. And I'm really just cleaning it up so it's easier for me to remember what I've got and for you guys watching to understand what we're left with. Because you've got to admit that that looks a lot tidier than that. We were looking for L. L is by itself on one side of the equal sign, which means we finished transpos transposing. And what I want to then do is think about different letters and transposing the formula around and around picking different things from the top shelf and just keep moving it around until you're used to it. By now, that should be easy for you. So let's move on to something that's a bit more difficult. Let's move on to Pythagoras, OK? We should all know this one. C equals the square root uh, A squared plus B squared. Okay. Now, this is a bit different. Firstly, we've, we've got a square root in there, which we have to deal with first, plus, and we've got pluses, so we're plusing and minusing, so things have to go in the right order. Okay. Right, we can't do anything with A squared or B squared until we've got rid of the square. Okay, so we need to break into that. I always explain it, we've got, to, we've got to break these guys out, all right? The way that we do that is the opposite of square root is to square. So if I square this side, I have to square this side. So whatever I do to that side, I do to this side. But on this side, if I squared the square root, that cancels each other out. And actually what I'm left with, that's step one. I've got step two. I've got c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Okay. Let's say that we're looking for b squared. So up here, we're looking for b squared. Let's imagine that this, these have values. Okay. 
So let's say that A squared is 25 pounds, B squared is 50 pounds. Well, 25 plus 50 has to equal 75 pounds. Okay. Because that plus that equals that. So when we do the opposite, so at the moment we've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we have to remember to take away from the c squared. Okay, so let me explain that for you. What we need is, so c squared, I'm going to leave a bit of a gap so we can see what's going on. We're looking for b squared. So at the moment I've got a squared plus b squared. I need to remove the a squared from the b squared. So what's the opposite of plus? Well, it's minus. So I need to minus a squared. Whatever I do that side, I have to do this side. And I have to remember to put the minus on the right side of the c squared. So like so, okay? Because then if I put that all in, we've got, 75 pounds minus 25 pounds equals 25 pounds plus 50 pounds minus 25 pounds. Okay. Now, as we've said in the previous videos, well, I, I, I can clean that up because plus 25 pounds, minus 25 pounds, nothing happens, you know? So 50 pounds plus 25 pounds, well that's 75 pounds, minus 25 pounds, well I'm back down to 50 pounds. So I could just clean that up and I can remove that and I can remove that, okay? And if I rub that out, like so, you can see, the formula makes sense. 75 pounds minus 25 pounds equals 50 pounds. Okay, so that makes sense. If I had put the A on the other side, so let me show you what would happen then. So we've got C squared equals your A squared plus B squared. Put the values in, so we've got 75 pounds, we've got 25 pounds, and we've got 50 pounds, okay? I know that I need to minus the A squared away, so I do A squared there, okay? If I move that onto the wrong side of C squared, well, then I end up with A squared minus C squared, and then if I put the values in, so that's 25 pounds. That's 25 pounds. I've now got 25 pounds minus 75 pounds. Well, that puts me into negative figures. Equals 25 pounds plus 50 pounds minus 25 pounds. So let's clean that up so it's easier for you to understand what's going on because 50 pounds plus 25 minus 25, when well, nothing happens, so I can take that out like so, but 25 pounds minus 75 pounds doesn't equal 50 pounds, it equals minus 50 pounds. That doesn't work, that's not right, that's incorrect. Okay, the formula is not balanced, all right? So when you do this, you have to make sure that you get the B squared or the A squared, in front of the c squared because the c squared is the total that's the final amount yeah okay so let's remove these we're looking for b squared so again you should know by now that i'm removing the a squared so i remove the a squared i have to put it this side okay and then i can clean that up by getting rid of that and that so my step three will be c squared minus a squared equals b squared. 
Do I have B by itself? And the answer is no, because it's B squared. Oh, I'm looking for B. To get rid of the square, I have to square root. So if I square root the B, whatever I do this side, I have to do this side. They cancel each other out. So that and that cancels each other out. And so I'm left with step four. I've got the square root of C squared minus A squared equals B. Okay. Simple as that. To give that some playing around with, choose different things out of there. Obviously, you've got to deal with the square root first. You've got to break these guys out, get them all onto the same level so they're all equal value. The way to get rid of a square is to, sorry, square root is to square. And whatever you do that side, you do this side. That cancels out that. And then you're left with C squared and everything on the same line. So C squared, A squared, B squared. Okay. Right, in my next video, I'm gonna show you some very easy maths um, in triangles. So you don't even have to transpose it. It's gonna be the V over IR, P over VI, and a few other ones that then make it easier if you put them into a triangle so you don't have to actually think about what you're doing. And all of this is designed to go on your formula sheet so that when you revise for the exam, you're revising, writing that formula sheet out and that way your results will increase, okay? Before you go into the exam, I want you to, or sorry, before you log into the computer on the exam, I want you to ask for a piece of paper. I want you to vomit up your formula sheet. I want you to write out as much as you can. There's a direct correlation between people that write out pages and pages of formula sheets and get distinctions compared to people that write out the Ohm's Law Triangle, maybe get a pass or a fail, okay? This is something that I want you to learn. Practice writing out the formula sheet. That is the way that you're going to pass the exam. Practice transposing them because then you can transpose those formulas. You can answer any question in that exam. Hope this video has been of some help. See you on the next one.